Hello all, uh, we are here for a Know Your Rights Guide to the ongoing clemency process. We're gonna be addressing both questions 10 and 11 uh, during this viewing. Uh, I'm here with Elise as usual. And uh, I am Trevor Walraven. I'm the co-founder, administrative coordinator and outreach for Youth Justice Project, which is under the umbrella of the Oregon Justice Resource Center. Uh, I am a formerly incarcerated juvenile lifer, so I served nearly 18 years in nine different facilities throughout the state of Oregon. I did the bulk of my time on the youth side at McLaren Youth Correctional Facility, where I was at for three years. And then I did the bulk of my adult time at the Oregon State Penitentiary, where I was at for about a dozen years. Um, I have been involved in advocacy for a number of years, both inside and outside of incarceration. Uh, I'm really happy to see the state of Oregon in a place where we're able to have these conversations um, and that you know this opportunity is very real for those of you that are viewing this this video and have, have been invited to submit an application by the governor. Um, so great to be here and uh, yeah, Elise. Hi, my name is Elise Kupfer. I am an investigator and mitigator with the Oregon Legal Support System services, which is under the umbrella of the Oregon Justice Resource Center. My background is in social work, uh, specifically working with youth and violence prevention. I have been doing prison reform and advocacy and working with incarcerated folks for on and off in the last decade. And I am grateful for the opportunity to be here, as I'll echo what Trevor said, it's um, great to see progress being made and hopefully um, these this video will reach you all and be helpful. Okay, so we're gonna cover some of the basic info and reminders. Um, if you already have a lawyer, you should talk to them before submitting a clemency application. A lawyer can help you to one, decide whether to complete the application and two, how to complete the application in a way that is best for your particular situation. Um, neither myself nor Elise are attorneys. Uh, we cannot offer you ad legal advice um, and we can't speak to your individual situation. You can submit this application on your own without help from an attorney, but it's a good idea to talk to a lawyer if you can. If you submit the clemen clemency application, there is a real chance that the governor will reduce or release you earlier than you are currently expected to. But there are no guarantees. Uh, submitting this application does not mean that the governor will definitely reduce your sentence. And there are some ways that completing this application can harm you. Whatever you write could be used against you later, whether in pending legal matters, parole hearings, second look hearings, uh, resentencings, um, new criminal charges, embarrassing news articles, wrong hands at DOC. Um, so again, if you can consult with your attorney, if you do not have an attorney and have questions or con concerns uh, about the application, you can contact us. We'll, we'll provide our contact info in the end of this. Um, so questions 10 and 11, we're doing these together because they kind of go together. Um, they're very similar and pretty simple. Uh, again, you can use a timeline, a chart, or a worksheet to help you map out the details, to help you remember and keep things organized, whatever works best for you, right? Um, it is also okay to say, I don't remember the specific dates or details, uh, and write what you remember about education and or certificates that you received throughout the time that you've been incarcerated. So here's question 10. Please describe any educational opportunities that you have undertaken while incarcerated. This includes graduating high school, obtaining your GED, enrolling, enrolling in college courses, taking technical skills courses, or engaging in vocational training. Question 10 is asking you to list your education and training it is not asking you to describe the impact. Like questions eight and nine, remember be liberal, creative, any skills, courses, or training can be listed here, even if it doesn't feel formal. Um, an example might be if you shadowed someone at their job for a day or two, this could count as vocational training. 
if you have had if you have not had any opportunities to get education or vocational training you can consider explaining why you have not if you feel comfortable doing so examples might be learning limitations or disabilities financial limitations access um, you can also explain what kind of educational or vocational training you would like to get on the outside if you have the chance Here is a, just a very basic class training name, dates, chart, timeline, just examples of tools that you can use uh, to keep track of these different things and just to kind of collect your thoughts. Um, again, whatever's gonna work best for you is, is what you should use. Question 11, please list any certificates you have received while incarcerated. This question is asking you to list the certificates. It is not, asking for further explanation or writing. Again, be liberal, list any group, class, training, or program completed where you earned a certificate of any type. These do not have to be formal certificates like a diploma or a degree. Be proud of yourself and don't sell yourself short. It's okay if you have misplaced or lost the actual certificates, it's very unlikely you will be asked to submit them. Do your best to compile the list. That is your best foot forward. Questions 10 and 11. Again, these questions do ask you to list your education, training, and certificates. They do not ask you to provide a timeline, and they do not ask for impact. So it's really about listing what you have participated in. And the reason we're so specific about being, being direct about this is because this application is huge and we just want to save you the time and energy where you can. So. And I think it's also important that that our understanding of the governor's office intent is to get this information based on the specific questions they're asking. So if you've heard stories in the past about, you know, 100 plus page clemency petitions that have been put together, um, whether or not they've been successful, this is a modified version of the clemency directly from the governor's office that they have put together because it's the information they're looking for and considering whether or not to grant you uh, a commutation. Here's another uh, worksheet or timeline um, chart. Again, you know, it's a it's a tool for use if it's useful to you um, is not something you have to use. Use what makes sense for you. few reminders, neither Elise nor I are attorneys. We cannot offer legal advice. Oregon Justice Resource Center is not representing you, but we are here to provide some guidance. If you do have an attorney, contact them before you submit the application. You can submit this application on your own without help from an attorney, but it's a good idea to talk with your lawyer if you can. You do not have to answer every question. You can say, I don't know the specifics and or I don't feel comfortable answering this without consulting attorney. That will not hurt you. Feel free to contact us or have your family or friends contact us. Um, we are not your lawyers, but we may be able to field general questions from your friends, family, yourselves. Um, we may be able to connect you with a lawyer who can provide additional assistance if needed. Our phone number uh, for, the re for reception is 503. 944-2270. And our office address is Oregon Justice Resource Center, PO Box 5248, Portland, Oregon, 97208. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.